just about every fighter we see in the movie is a long-standing Mortal Kombat character, while Cole is the only new fighter uh, for Earthrealm. I'm Sonya. Name's Jax. That's Kano. I'm Liu Kang. Kong Lao. Scorpion. I am Sub-Zero. How did you kind of create a unique fighting style for Cole while still keeping it grounded within the unique Mortal Kombat style universe? Yeah, um, first off, I'm really glad that you liked the film. I appreciate that, man. Um, we worked really hard on it. Uh, fortunately for me, as um, an actor, playing Cole, it mirrored what was happening in my in my life. Um, and we shot the film uh, in, in order from beginning to end. So really, Cole is experiencing this crazy thing. And as he experiences this wild adventure, this journey, um, he grows as a, as a fighter and as a... Um, his style develops and changes as he learns who he is and where he's from. Um, and that's just something that happened with me in the movie as well. So, you know, being seeing Scorpion and Sub-Zero and Jax and Sonya and like having these iconic moments as a person, like as a, as a fan, like, holy shit. Um, those are the same things that he was actually going through as well as the, he develops my, the martial art develops and that's something that I've always tried to do in, in my projects. I try to pick things that are challenging and that are going to break boundaries with uh, the action community. Uh, it's very important for me. So yeah, it's, uh, I'm proud to uh, earn my place with Cole Young. It was like fun, but I'm not going to say easy, but I just had so much fun even though it was difficult. It's it with, uh, with Cole Young, Louis Tan, because he's, he's a martial artist himself and he know what he's doing and he's fit he's fast you know he can do a lot of stuffs and then he didn't use double and i, I didn't use double uh you know most of the fights so you, the journey of the fight is just real because because when you fight someone and then they double the other guy it feels like you fight two different persons with the you know it just it just feel different but when you fight the same guy again and again and you know that the, the energy is, is it just resonated really good so i think that's that he, he he's he's a really good fighter uh i think it's safe to say that kung lao's flawless victory against natara is probably one of the brutalest scenes in the movie um i want to know uh for that fatality specifically how much of that was practical versus how much of that was cgi Oh, that's an interesting question. It was a blend of the both, um, both of the things, um, but it was actually more practical than um, CGI. I have to say because all the blood you see, that is all real. You know, I can't give away too much, but it's all you know. When we shot that fatality, it was coming at me, and it it was a mess. <laughs> And then later on, we um, they worked around with the CGI to to make it even look more outstanding. But yes, majority of it was all real. Wow. Yeah, it was certainly uh, gratuitous to say the least. Um, but I think it the, the finished product ended up looking really great. I think um, a lot of people um, felt sick um, on yeah. set watching it. <laughs> a, a big practical example that comes to mind is the Kano pulling out Reptile's heart because I know we saw we saw that on the set visit as well. But I was wondering. Um, how much of those were practical versus some of the CGI that you needed in the film? Hard to quantify, actually. I sort of need to sit here for longer than four minutes to think about it. But, you know, they probably most of them have some sort of base in reality. So because my approach was to try and do as much in camera as possible, obviously not all of it is, is in camera. There's, there's a lot of visual effects in the movie. But my feeling is that it, if, if we get the base and this is across the board, if we get as much in camera as possible, whether it be sort of ice or whether it be you know, the worlds we're creating, then the visual effects that go on top of that feel more end of elemental and authentic and real and therefore you believe it more. That That's my sort of attempted alchemy um, to, to get that tone and feeling right. So they all had, there's probably only one that's 100% VFX, but, but that was, we actually, created a real version of the thing um, to then use as reference. So it was all coming from reality. Kano wins, you fucking beauty. I want to know more about uh, some of Kano's hilarious dialogue and how much mm. free reign you had uh, with some of those one-liners, because 
I, I have a hard time believing that every single one of those were in the script. No, <laughs> they weren't. Um, I got no. Simon uh, McCoy definitely let me off. Uh, let me off the chain uh, to, to have a bit of fun. And I'm not sure any two takes were ever the same. Uh, so yes, there 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 would have been a lot to sift through. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I had a lot of fun. I was able to, to kick the tires. I mean, there was of course there was a script, and, and then there is a lot of scripted stuff too. But yeah, I was definitely able to. Um, to, to, yeah, to just to have a bit of fun. And that was part of the way I found the character, to be honest. You know, I was able to sort of, you know, to riff around improv and and through that, I was like, yeah, I'm starting to understand this guy. He's, yeah, he's, he's a bastard. He shoots his mouth off. He's, um, his bark is probably a little worse than his bite in a way, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was really fun to be able to figure out that Kano's words were as much of a weapon as his fists were, yeah. <laughs> And they, they were, imp imp what impressive words they were. Uh, he had me <laughs> had me howling in the theater. Where did the Kano and Gnome bit come from? <laughs> He's such a horrible character, right? He's such a despicable creature, uh, Kano. He's funny, and that's Josh Lawson, who's a gifted comedic actor. Right? And he's just so foul on so many levels that he needed his comeuppance to be humiliating and pathetic because ultimately he's, he is pathetic, you know? And so it was all about how to, how to get a comeuppance that, that was balanced out based on his character. And we just thought that would be perfect for him. I mean, he's, hilarious but revolting and foul and you know what better way to kill him than with a garden though Ludi for you there's a moment where Kano is beaten by Lu Ting with a series of low kicks which if you know you played the video game you'll know that's a pretty common tactic um did you actually play the game to identify some of those strategies uh and special moves and kind of um weave that into the levity of the film yeah, for us who actually played the game um, from the cast on set, we're just really gearing to get a lot of Easter eggs that really, um, we call it fan service, right? Mm -hmm. But it's true, you know, Luke Kang's leg sweeps are one of the cheapest things in the game. He could just do it over and over and over again. Same with his overpowered moves. Those are all in there. So, yeah, admittedly, that was that was one of the things we want to get in. And same with the other like lines that recall back to the Mortal Kombat lore. Um, and a lot of the feel where, um, you know, it, it pays homage to the video game and the history and the universe of Mortal Kombat. Flawless victory. There's a, there's a scene where Sub-Zero fights Scorpion and Cole. Um, and uh -huh. throughout that fight, he kind of sheds his armor. He gets down to like a stripped down, almost like a, you could say a palette swapped look. And then, uh -huh. you know, eventually he's defeated and he's, his body is brought back to the nether realm by yeah. uh, Kung. Is yeah. that kind of like a little bit of a, a, a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to uh, fans looking for maybe Noob Saibot or perhaps even opening the door for maybe Noob Saibot to be in a sequel? Well, everything you, you, saw, you, you saw in the movie, in the final fight, that was planned, of course. Mm -hmm. And then I think from the costume itself, because Sub-Zero is usually just blue, but Sub-Zero in this one, Sub-Zero behind in this one, you see the blue is very dark. So from there is actually a journey. The costume tells a story that actually he is like the, the dark uh, Sub-Zero, like the darkness, like the, the darkness, the phantom is eating him alive. Even the costume is kind of like changed to more dark blue. And the final fight, we see that he has the inner layer. It's not just like a blue Sub-Zero suddenly just, you know, costume changed to black as no cyborg. But we want to fill the bridge. We want to fill there is a story. There's a bridge into the darkness eating him alive from the inside. So you're right. I'm, I'm glad that you, 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 you know, I thought that people probably, you know, not gonna see it, but I'm glad you're a true fan of Noob Cyborg. That's why you know the transition of color, like from blue to black, the strip, everything is actually planned. That we hope, we hope, we can only hope we can see Noob Cyborg in the in the next one. Fingers crossed. 
uh, for Sonya Blade, now that she's finally gotten that status of a, of a chosen fighter for Earthrealm by the end of the film, um, I wonder if you have any fighters uh, maybe from that we didn't get to see this time around that you think Sonya would like to square off against in a potential sequel? I mean, I'd love to see her square off against Johnny Cage. <laughs> um, I wonder if her and Cassie Cage can square off. That might not be very PC. Ermac, um, Bakara, mm. uh, Katana. Wouldn't mind slapping the shit out of Johnny Cage. Do you guys have anybody in mind that you would like to see Johnny Cage? Or is, does anybody just leap out at you and you say, oh, would love to see him throwing some kicks? I'm not sure. I, it's really tough. I, I don't know. I, I'm of the mind that I'm like, make them audition like we have to audition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make them go through the hard songs like we had to. No, but I would love to see it. I, you know what would be great for me? I would love if I got to go in on the auditions and audition against people. I always, I've always wanted to do that. So no, I'm going to have to just leave it up to see who puts their hat in the ring. Look, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I, you know, the one person I kept thinking about, uh, and, and he's a buddy of mine, but is uh, James Marsden. I just, I, I don't know. He's kind of got a Johnny Cage vibe to me. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I, yeah, I just think he's, uh, he, he, there's something about him. He's got that Hollywood look, you know, and uh, I think he could, I think he could pull it off. I, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm going to leave that in the capable hands of, of, of Warner Brothers and Todd Garner and Simon McCoy and New Line and, and everybody who, who, who's going to weigh in on. On that decision, however, um, it would have to be somebody who can fight. But, you know, like we, like every actor has really, really brought uh, everything that they, they could to the table when it comes to doing their own fight scenes. So, like, we'd have to keep that up, I think, and also have to be somebody who can pull off the comedy. So, I don't have anybody. I don't have any favorites. Um, I think there's plenty of good uh, options out there, and I think that's a, that's a penthouse problem that I'm that I'm we're we're, we're willing to deal with because uh, that means there's a sequel. Yeah. yeah, that's a yeah. champagne problem. Uh, I think that, you know, yeah. Johnny Cage is such an iconic character. And um, I think that, you know, we bu we're building a new energy for this movie. We're building something that um, is respectful of the of the franchise from before, but we're also bringing a new era, like like the trailer said, you know what I mean? And that's, that's how we really feel about it. So there's many ways that it can go, in my mind. In my mind, you know, uh, there was an April Fool's joke on Twitter that I saw where it's like Keanu Reeves is going to play Johnny Cage. And I was, I was like, that's a pretty interesting casting. Uh, then there's guys like Scott Atkins, who was an incredible martial artist and, and an actor. And I think that that would be kind of a cool way to go about it. There's another uh, route, which is we can just, you know, find somebody completely new, um, something that's so fresh and, and, and uh, hold auditions and, 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 you know, find the perfect Johnny Cage. And then there's guys like maybe like Chris Pratt or someone who's like, has those comedy mm. elements yeah. to him, but also is uh, known for doing um, not his own action, but in the action world. Um, so he would have to probably train for that because- <laughs> Chris Pratt is great. That's a great choice, actually. Let's go. That's a great choice. Throughout history, different cultures all over the world reference a great tournament known as Mortal Kombat. 